Welcome everyone to the Vulcan Deck Masters Week Three, Day Three, uh, th uh, Day Two. That is with me, Frodan. Going to be co casting this. Uh, we got a pretty cool amount of matches today. How are you doing? Ready to cast? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, I couldn't finish out the day. Um, I was just here as actually substituting for you. But right. I'm glad that you got to finish out the day strong. I heard you guys had some ridiculous games. Yeah, Amaz and I had a lot of fun yesterday. Like, I hope we get games that are. I mean, maybe not as, as similar as far as the time they take, because those were ridiculously fast. But these sure. situations that, that, uh, that arose were actually uh, insanely funny. So, good viewership experience. So today, guys, uh, we've got sure. five matches for you. Um, obviously, we're nearing the playoffs. This is pretty much like the... So, like, this is the day where things get solidified. Who's going to move on to the playoffs? Um, a few matches are important, but for the most part, I think we've already got the scores for the, the group stage at this point. Next week are going to be the playoffs. So for a few players today, the win is crucial. So this could be like a tournament defining for them. Absolutely. And th there's a lot on the line here, not just for making money, but also world championship right. points. I think people are recognizing that the window is closing soon. I believe at the end of September, or end of August, excuse me, uh, in the beginning of September, we're not going to have any more tournaments that are eligible for World Championship points. So 100 points to the winner is a huge deal. <clears throat> you have players like PhoneTap and Life Coach who are leading their respective lead, uh, regions. And being able to get into the qual a qualifier process of like regionals, you require a certain point threshold. So it's important that you get those points and get to those playoff seating. So people have a lot more on the line than just some cash. Yeah. And very often it's about the standing, you know, beating somebody that you know is really good in the game sometimes. That on its own is worth uh, playing the games through. All right, so we're looking at Hawkeye. Hawkeye, by the way, uh, he's not listening to this, but, you know, congratulations to him and uh, the new team that he have got. Fade to Karma, unifying a lot of players, a lot of European players at this point. Uh, so we've got a new team in the Hearthstone scene, which is always kind of exciting. Yeah, it's got a good mix of some of the old older players like Toyda who's very well experienced and has been on several teams versus with some new guys who are rising up. Um, Hawkeye has been picking up the results uh, although his experience here in Vulcan hasn't been you know the cleanest of any uh, endeavors here. It's actually 0-3 and it's unfortunate because I don't think that um, Hawkeye can make it but he can play the spoiler. If he beats Orange here then he effectively takes down Orange's chance to get some points. Not to mention that there's also, you know, standing within the community. You don't want to go, like, no wins. You know, and there's also some other ranking systems that calculate this, you know, whether PvP Live or... Um, yeah, external you know, ranking systems, etc. So, Hawkeye's going to do his best to win. And again, you know, he did bring Shaman. So, I've got to say, uh, again, a very unorthodox decision. But he's been sticking to his guns, which is something I'm a little surprised by. After the poor results that he's had from previous Shaman... Um, you know, bringing it to a tournament. He hasn't done so well with it in Vulcan, so I'm surprised he brought it again straight up. All right, so. Yeah, the, I mean, I think mid-range Shaman's weaknesses are continuing to get exposed um, the more we see it. I think part of Hawkeye's success in DreamHack was that if you know you're playing against Hawkeye, you can prepare a lot better th for him, but in Swiss, you can't really necessarily prepare to snipe a specific deck, so you can bring something that people aren't necessarily expecting as much, and surprise people with it. Um, and with that said, I think if you know you're playing against Hawkeye and now you've come to expect this mid-range Shaman, classes like Rogue should absolutely stomp on it. And if you bring three classes that are good against it, um, for example, I see Orange brought Hunter, Rogue, and I am assume the Patient Warrior, then this Shaman's going to normally have a bad time. I mean, uh, this is actually a really aggressive play from Orange. Going straight up for Hawkeye, forcing the trade. How much do you think... He's really, I mean, how, how much do you like this play? Because as much as I feel it's fine, and he, you know, he's got Blade 3 for the wipe, um, the wipe could get punished. I mean, there's an Urbian Eggs on, in, in hand here for, uh, for Hawkeye that he can drop to deny a Blade 3, and unless he picks up lethal right away, Orange could put himself in a really unfortunate position. Yeah, uh, he's going to require that his blade flurry is going to be super effective. Um, it's kind of like the situation where there was no good way to clear the board. Oh, man. Oh, my. This is insane. <laughs> this Unnoyotron right here is the MVP. Well, I mean, it's not the end of the world. He can still just, um, <clears throat> like, yeah. fan of knives. 
Okay. Well, Blade Flurry after the or Blade Flurry before the Phantom Knives allows you to clear off the spiders um, and still take out the Anoyotron itself. Oh, but the point is, you can still get the damage in. And his hand was naturally very aggressive, so I think it's okay to be naturally aggressive. That's what we have to expect. A uh... Whoa, double prep here. Orange's options are drying out. Like, he needs to pick up his Eviscerates very soon. Some kind of for some kind of face damage. Is this a game where we're actually going to see Hawkeye hex his own stuff? <laughs> I remember that play from uh, a faraway tournament. I think by Colento, he just hexed his own minion. Yeah, I mean that's something that you do in the most desperate of times. Against right. Rogue, it's not as effective because the hero power can easily take it out. But mm -hmm. you know, some classes like Hunter, where that stops three, maybe even more damage. Uh, that's that's really important. In this case, too, I think Orange is okay being aggressive because if that Salsi can get two damage to the face and the weapon hit can hit one, then within four damage, that's very reasonable striking distance. A second oil pickup would be lethal and eviscerate, like you said. Um, and it's just ways to couple damage together, whether through SI7 agents and you yeah. know, to put everything else out. You'll be okay in the end. This is still not the worst. I mean, this Violet Teacher is going, if he wants to, he can actually get the damage to the face and spawn a bunch of 1-1s one in the process. I wonder how, how dangerous Alakir is to Orange. Like, it's well, not, he's not it, quite there yet, but it could be a big issue. Yeah, especially because I assume that he's going to be shoving past... Well, I guess he can't really deal with it. He just uses Fire Elemental for tempo on the board, not, um, you know, board control. So he's going to probably clear off this uh, Antique Heal Pop. But if he was able to push damage every single turn like that, it would have been so nice. And Hawkeye needs to pick up a Defender of Argus or some way to really enable these Nerubian eggs to be relevant. Because if they're not, then they just sit there as anti-Blade Flurry tech, but your opponent's already used one. Yeah, that's why I thought he was going to play them too uh, earlier. You know, instead of playing the Azure Drake, I thought he was going to go for the double egg to really prevent some kind of massive board clear from Orange. But he opted against it. And another pickup. That's card draw in the worst case scenario. That's card draw you can use. Yeah, kind of. Mm, I wonder if he just goes in for the attack now because he already has prep. So I think South Sea hitting the face here is okay. If you want to get that damage in, you think that you can't get the. Like, if he has taunt, if he rolls a taunt totem even and clears your board, yeah. um, South Sea gets blocked. Okay, this is starting to look not so bad for Hawkeye. Like he did take a lot of damage. Then again, Orange is so close to getting what he what he needs here. I was expecting him to keep Blood Mage for a five damage eviscerate, but since he kept the South Sea deck, and then he can still get the damage in. I'm surprised he didn't attack face though, because that really guarantees a lethal with eviscerate unless Lothab shows up. Yeah, absolutely. surprising. And, um, the South Sea would have been, and it's like we said. Okay, so uh, this is being drawn. It's like we said too, um, because he didn't go for that attack, this Alakir blocks it. And nice uh, yeah. pick up a sap, I guess. Yeah. Now he's got to pick up sap. Well, still not over. You can pick up sprint and easily climb back into stuff. Lotheb. Um, I mean, it doesn't really block too much. There's only one spell in the hand, and he can still use it. I think you're really concerned about, like, Flame Tongue Totem being able to come out and then going yeah. for, like, insane power with his Alakir. Would that be lethal at 10, 16? I mean, it would be close yeah. to lethal, considering all the spells that uh, Shaman would actually be able to put together with that Fire Ellie. So, I mean, if Orange had gone for the South Sea deck, this was game. Yes, you're If we're he had played it, they, this would be, uh, this already would be over. I'm oh, now he's not going to eviscerate. Flame Tongue Totem is lethal. Oh, wow. That's, that's not quite lethal. Mm -mm. Wait, actually, is it? No. Uh, he, he can't play Oops. that in Fire Elemental. And even if he could, that would be a little bit off. But if, <clears throat> but if he was able to play Flame Tongue Totem, he would have gotten 18 damage on the board plus the 3 from Fire Elemental. So that would have been lethal. Yeah, that would have been lethal with the Fire Ellie. Oh, would man. you just hex and push? I'm kind of thinking about that, yeah. Makes, like, you could even kill the frog if you want to. I mean, you could also just trade the fire elemental away. And right. hope you, you pick up a defensive Argus, maybe, for more consistency. 
You or definitely you just want put to out a totem. Yeah. Yeah. You want like the, you want the totem. Doesn't pick it up. Hmm. No, Orange can still win this. Like Sprint is almost a lethal very often here because it's going to maybe draw an SI7. You can com combo with Eviscerate. And that's it. There it is. The okay. SI7 gets picked up. So many draws here for Orange enable the lethal. He's going to take the first game against the Shaman, but again, that's no surprise. Like, it's, it's a very common matchup uh, for Rogues to win. Yeah, and I think specifically it's really good to bring it against Hawkeye. If you know that he's the person that's coming up against you, uh, you got you got to target that Shaman. And Rogue is one of the best at dealing with it because Shaman doesn't pressure Rogue enough. Um, that has great AoE and board control. And most importantly, Shaman usually can't do anything about that Blade Flurry because it pushes through everything. And Shaman's so board reliant on momentum that if they don't get it, then uh, they just end up losing. Yeah. So in this case, like going to Hunter is fine uh, because his warrior was banned. And I think Orange is in a really down position, just 2-0 Hawkeye. Yeah, I wonder if Hawkeye, because I remember uh, like a long time ago, we had uh, a few a few names, like a few professional players that were associated with specific archetypes, right? Like you would say Amaz was the priest and, you know, this or that player was playing Druid nonstop. And then people realized it's, it's too easy to get targeted if you do that. And so eventually they had to mix up their game and be really just well-rounded as opposed to specialized. And I think Hawkeye might have to resort to something like this in the near future. It's like the double whammy of conquest. Not only can you on, not only are you limited to playing and winning with one deck. Excuse me, not playing, but uh, you're only allowed to win with one deck a single time. Um, you also are vulnerable to get targeted if you become too predictable. So you can't just bring a class that you always like because, you know, at worst than the other formats in last year's standing, for example. Uh, you can lose once, but you can lose yeah. three times with it, even though it might be a good deck. It might even be a fun, entertaining deck, but people don't care. They'll just punish you. <laughs> like, people are going to let you pull off that reincarnate shaman combo. Yeah. Well, did you see that one game where the guy played and there was like 10 kill with his odds? That were like in a, in a tournament setting. I don't think it was a tournament setting. Okay. It was just, I think it was a ladder game on a popular streamer. I can't remember. It was just like. Oh, that, that's oh, every it was, day, It was man. day nine. Did you see day nine stream? Like, basically, yeah. he had, like, a bajillion Kale Bazaars keep coming out on both sides. It was super funny. <laughs> and, like, I mean, he kept killing Sneeds, and Sneeds popped to Kale Bazaars, and his Kale Bazaar revived his own Kale Bazaar. And it was just, oh, like, so it was like, just very versus Kit Kats, right? Like, that, <laughs> like that level of uh Yeah, yeah. It was just, like, ridiculous RNG. The whole game was so funny. I, I encourage you. I'll link, I'll link you after this, this series is over. So Hawkeye's actually got a really decent hand against the Hunter. Like I initially, I didn't think it was that amazing um, the, of a matchup, but it's looking like Hawkeye is lining up the cards that he needs to deal with Hunter. Like the Zombie Child getting picked up here is going to curve in really nicely if he wants it to. The Egg can be enabled really easily. He's got a Shredder on the back as a backup. Yeah, and I think he's you know thinking about sequencing. Like if I kill this mad scientist, an explosive trap comes out. Then I want to attack with the one one first. Or if I think it's freezing trap, maybe I pop it and then pop the one one back. Um, or you know even the I guess in this case he's not really worried about the freezing trap on the egg. And, it's and it is explosive trap. Okay. Which, I, it's actually not that bad. If you're the hunter player, you're almost happy. Um, because that way you're guaranteed to get both of your traps out. Instead of just the one. Which has been a problem sometimes. It's hard to say. Because I think you're happy on one end in the sense that you can understand that you can time it with... Like, it's better for what happened, right? He doesn't want the, the egg to be bounced back. Right. But it's worse in the sense that he can't really play the board control game. And racing is also, like, really bad considering that he has zombie chow, so he won't be able to truly race effectively because Explosive Trap will eventually kill it unless he gets a Searing Totem. Or not a Searing, a Healing Totem. Healing Totem, yeah. Which is a really big problem, I guess. Healing Totem is the really pesky thing where, as a hunter, when you're trying to, you know, put down minions um, to a certain amount of health to make them go off of Explosive Trap, then you're kind of wasting your damage away. Like, cause that's really that's a very good tr strategy against you know non shaman players um, and maybe non priests, but those are kind of uh, a rare breed nowadays. So it's like you just put everything at two health and everything goes off. But against shaman, there's a twenty five percent chance you just lose the game on the back of that play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
So I think the race begins, begins now. <laughs> and he's going to have to play Lothab here. But yeah. I don't think he can win in time because now there's another explosive trap which will kill off the Flame Tongue Totem. And that's the key. Being able to that have things be played, though, up. right? Yeah. Oh, you're right. So he's got he's got about a turn to try to push in because he's got three from hand with Fire Ellie or Rock Biter, and if you just, I mean, oh no, you can't just push face here. There's no there's no sense to it. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. virtually dead on board. You'd oh wow. Um, he was hoping for one of those to hit the uh, Flame Tongue or the Shredder, probably. Yes. And Hawkeye here sitting on 13 damage. He needs to find five. He's got three, but he's missing just a tiny bit. I'm wondering if... Um, well, he has to also trade on board. I'm wondering if he should use Rock Biter here and save Fire Elemental as... Actually, I don't, I don't think so. So, Pilot uh, Shredder, Rock Biter, and then... Well, the th I was thinking because Fire Element, because he ultimately he has to win. He's at seven HP, which makes it very easy for Hunter to kill him. Yeah. Um, but I guess he can't really play around a second explosive trap because he knows Mad Science is out there. So one way or another, explosive trap would be coming out here, right? Yeah. If there's a second one in the deck, it would come out just about now, pretty much every single time. So I guess Vitality Totem was his best out. Oh my God. Okay. So this wow. is like the awkward scenario that I was imagining. So yeah. Mad Scientist didn't pull the trap, but imagine if it put it anyways. You'd be put at a scenario where you need to heal, and you can't attack. So, so heal bot he, here, right? Yeah, it's heal bot. No, but you're right. It's, it's one. No, no, it's the most no, awkward position. Doctor, no, no, that's it. Yeah. I was like, is there a way you can get Doctor Boom to explode the Boom bots and change the game, but you can't. Um, and that's a quick two zero. But something to consider was that. Fire Elemental is direct damage from the hand, so if he was able to push on the board somehow and said that Fire Elemental would kill him the following turn, um, just from the hand, he could avoid Explosive Trap. And right. he knew it was coming. It was either in the hand or it was Mad Scientist. But I don't think he could. That was the problem. So Yeah, even pushing full phase damage, either left two minions on the board or one plus a hero power, which again, you know, you're weak to Quick Shot, Eagle Horn, Bow, Wolf Rider, just about anything in that Hunter deck. So like... I get it, but I'm curious to know if Hawkeye was running, um, what's, his, what's his name, Crackle into it in that deck. Because a lot of people still play like the one of. I'm not sure how frequently people still play Crackle and Shaman. Yeah, you know, Cleto was even saying in Challenge Zone that Shaman's uh, one of the best classes at utilizing one ofs. Um, because, you know, like one Crackle can be really useful. Or if you split it, like one Lightning Bolt, one Crackle, um, one Feral Spirits. All of them still have a very strong place in the metagame if timed correctly. So it probably has some sort of damage. But he also has such early game board that I think he may have forewent some of that early removal. Um, either way, it's pretty sad that Hawkeye went 0-4. I don't think any player enjoys doing that. Uh, at least he went down 0-4 gloriously trying to make Shaman work. And he started to make a reputation for himself that he'll play Shaman for better or for worse. And that, you know, that makes him a little predictable, but also makes him exciting and fun to watch because you know you'll get to see some diversity. And if the rumors of the new expansion are, are true and uh, Shaman gets some pretty new cooled cards to play with, I'm looking forward to see what Hawkeye can do. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. So either way, guys, we'll be taking a short break here before moving on to the second match, which is going to be Strife Crow versus Kang. Kang, again, a South Korean player who hasn't done too well so far. He's 0-3 as well in the event. And Strife Crow, if he wins this, I think is guaranteed to move on. Um, and if he loses, I think there's still a chance for a tiebreaker you know, battle uh, in his group. So we'll see how that goes. We'll be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 